gold farm kind of sucks. This one's pretty neat. And this one here, well, it's pretty new, but I expect it's pretty cool too. Hello. Hi. Now it's usually same dimension, so you would send them to the overworld, uh -huh. drop them, and send them back. But I have a second count, so I can skip the send in the back part and I can keep it spawning quicker. I don't use an auto clicker currently. So I'm trying to figure out like, I don't even necessarily want XP. I just want them to drop gold ingots. <laughs> So I'm like trying to well, figure out. You're probably better out. off to do an aggro one. Yeah. Oh, I'll show you the other side of the part. Like my favorite Ooh. side. Oh, oh yes, yes, please. This is fantastic. I love it. <laughs> yeah, they all pop down out of the inside here. The yeah. Center. Oh, that's so good. This is cool down here. This is a box order. It like pulls an item from a box, compares it to the filter, and then puts it back in the box and sends the box. Down the right path. I am just starting to really dig into like storage tech stuff. And oh, oh my thing. gosh, it's a lot. <laughs> I'm I'm doing it all single dimension. And I just spent the morning like uh messing around with uh mine kind of a, a similar minecart system to what I have at my raid farm for picking up the items and then sending it in shulker loaders. And I'm just proud of myself for that. <laughs> That's all it is. It's like a step and sort. And then you just want, oh, wouldn't it be convenient if it did this? And then you're like, is there something like that? And then you learn about it. And you're like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if it did this? And then you'll find something. Down here's the actual nuts, nuts and bolts of everything. Your storage systems are so neat and organized. And I'm like, damn, I wish I could pull this off. <laughs> Thanks so much. All right. Good luck on your trading. And I'll see yep. you around. It's always a good day when you get to hang out at Copper's area, but that's correct. Today, we're gonna build a gold farm. Now out here to the northwest, northeast, northeast of our industrial area, we've got some nether wastes. You guys have made quite a trip here. Dang, where are you going? Just off on a vacation, seeing the world? Can't blame you for that. Now, I've got a few requirements for for this farm. It needs to be single dimension, and it needs to be an aggro farm so that we can get gold ingots without having to use an auto clicker and kill them with looting and sweeping edge and all that. Now, I definitely need to do some math to figure out how many magma blocks I need because I do not have enough. I have about two and a half shulkers. So I'm going to utilize things from different farms both that we looked at today and some other things that I've just um, picked up as I've been researching for this but what fun is it standing around and talking about what we're gonna do let's do some of it now I've got a bunch of fire potions fire resist potions specifically um, let's pop down underneath the whiskey farm here if we come down into the back rooms, I've already done a lot of digging around. As you can see, I've done a lot of netherite mining down at that level, but up here, I've also basically exhausted all of the magma block deposits in this little island in the midst of many lava lakes. Now, the only thing we have to fear is lava itself. Well, as it turns out, I didn't use a single one of these. I am, however, pretty sure that I cleared out all of the magma blocks under the particular area of island in the middle of the lava ocean. Copper was, however, kind enough to let us AFK at uh, his magma cube farm. And so we have these, what is this, six, six boxes and then one, two, and three. So a little bit over nine boxes of magma magma blocks there we go now i will admit i do believe that build height is different in the nether than in the overworld and i'm not sure what height that is at i don't know if i'm even wrong in that assumption who knows all right this shall be our initial platform here did i just say shall like a freaking victorian i'm already gonna need so much more glass Looks like I may end up spending more time with the uh, librarians. All right, well, 
This is just going to be a lot of laying blocks down. Rather mundane. So, I'll bring you back when things are a little more interesting around here. Oh, they're mad. Which is a good thing in this instance. Um, our structure here is all completely built. As you can see, we ended up with six layers. And there's only a few spawning on the bottom layer, which is really interesting to me. Um, I think we could have even done just five. Um, we have a few pathfinding to these spots here. Anyways, we have all of the structure built for this. Um, and now we just need to add in like the redstone components and the collection system and all that good stuff. Okay, so here's our redstone component. Basically what's happening is we have uh, iron trap doors going back and forth. And those are what the, the piglins are falling on and dying on. Um, and then they also shuffle the items down into this area where they then get bounced off the slime and down the ice pad. Um, in the center, we're going to have lava for burning XP and rotten flesh and, you know, all the other extra things. And then we'll be picking up the gold nuggets and the gold ingots um, in hopper minecarts underneath the ice. Oh, geez. Yeah, we need to make sure we're spawn proofing sooner rather than later. I just did a quick experiment to confirm this. And yes, you can slide along items along the ice with buttons on top, which is absolutely fantastic now that we've got these redstone sections in all we need to do is add our storage okay i've turned off the redstone sounds because there are a lot going on and i'm still figuring out the best way to attach all the systems up to one or maybe two switches and we need to set our uh item filters but we are about ready to go well, while we're waiting for them to de-aggro, this is something I'm not sure about our, about like aggro-based gold farms. Why do these guys not yeet themselves off the edge? Cause obviously the guys in the middle do that. So why not these guys? I ended up possibly gutting the place. Um, now we have a lot simpler redstone and everything just comes down the middle there. Hello, sir. Oh yeah, there you go. And you do you do a a, a little push. Oh, jeez, there we go. And then what we're gonna do? Let's see which what side should I do it from? We do it from there. Whoa, almost fell off the edge. It's fine. We're gonna mash just a little bit of glass into this guy's head. There you go. And then we do a little a little a little pushy push. There we go. Nice. Good work. Mm -hmm. I compliment your AI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come through here, sir. Oh, excellent, excellent work. You also are capable of walking. Congratulations. Alrighty, well, most of our redstone is done here. Um, except for the on switch, which isn't necessary to run the farm, uh, ironically. Let's talk about what I've done with this. The jerks are gone. The dudes on the sides that were keeping everybody aggroed all the time, they're gone. Uh, these guys stayed aggro for an hour while it was AFK. Um, so I think they're spawning in fast enough that it's not an issue. I also replaced the sides of the drop shoots with glass because um, things were getting caught on the walls here and also zombified piglins were getting caught in the walls and not dying and not getting you know, stuck into the item stream. Where did you spawn, sir? All right, things are moving so fast here that I can't really see very well. There's a, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So things are getting picked up where they're supposed to, when they're supposed to. Anyways, let's talk about what's going on in here. So these first two hopper mine carts um, have item filters for the nuggets. They're sending them down into shulker loaders, which hopefully will work. I had to, reconfigure them multiple times it's fine but then the one at the end is an item filter for the gold ingots they come over here and when there are items in the dropper this dropper chain gets triggered and this piston starts going um it of course lines things up with the honey and then sends them off down the hoppers into the droppers for these dudes 
It was, of course, very smart of me to build a giant gold farm and then decide to cover the entire thing with glass. But it is looking pretty cool and it's only gonna get cooler. I may have uh, broken the server's villager economy in trading for glass. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Now the jellyfish tends to be flowing that direction a little bit. So we'll start the tentacles from ever so slightly over to the right here and build them up to connect to the magma blocks. But before we finish adding the tentacles to our jellyfish, it's time to do a little bit of giving back to the server. One thing that this farm has gotten me in the mindset for is an auto crafter. I am now so ready for the auto crafter to show up. I was gonna do this before anyways, but now I feel extra bad about uh, causing issues with these fine gentlemen. And so it's time we're gonna put up some vending machines here at the villager hall. That gold really seems to go a lot less of a long way when uh, it's turned into apples. And then let's test these out first. Nice. Nice, okay. And there we have it, a couple of vending machines for our trading hall. I feel like I should add a couple of signs. Now, I feel like there are better ways that I could have worded this possibly, but I said basically vending machines for use at trading hall only, free to use. Ah, look at it show up. All right, well, we definitely need more tendrils in order to really sell it, so. I guess let's get building. Love it. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. I'm trying to decide if I should add, you know, some extra wisps off the tendrils. Uh, like red, red sandstone walls or birch fences, things like that. But while we chew on that question, let's go catch some fish. Oh no, the sun's going down. Awkward timing. Okay, now let's go get some fish. Oh, hello, dolphin. You are very sweet and kind. That also causes me issues. All right, hear me out. Wouldn't this make a fantastic mini game though? A bucket of fish or, you know, something really chill named. But basically you have to catch fish and you can add like different difficulty levels. Like you could add the difficulty level of dolphin's grace, for example. I don't know. I feel like that would be a really, really fun mini game to like work on and develop mechanics for. There's of course an actual reason for us going and collecting fish and that is our axolotls. We've got these little blue guys, right? And we, we mixed in a couple of them to our like normal regular stock. You know what, we'll let that happen. Uh, we mixed we mixed a couple of them into our normal regular stock at Witch's Best Friend, the the familiar shop we run. So we color sort our axolotls, right? Um, and so there were a couple that were just mixed into the colors sorted out uh, normally, and those two have been bought at this point. They've been found. 
So the question then is, what do we do about the blue axolotls? Because they're a really rare mob, and there are very, very few people who want to do the job of actually breeding them up and getting them. Um, but a lot of people would love to show them off, right? And I was like, I could color sort them out and put them in their own like their their own box, right? And just sell them for more, right? Or I could just mix some more back in. We could do that too. And Derek suggested in my YouTube comments that maybe um, I do a vending machine. And it's a, it's a lower price, but it's kind of a, a gamble. You get what you get, right? But then I can also color sort them and set them aside for a higher price. Anyways, I love that idea. I love the vending machine idea, if you haven't caught on from earlier in the episode. Alrighty, we've got our friends, our stock in tow. So let's go. Check out Ducky's portal. This is ridiculous. I love it. It's the coolest hacking thing. Alrighty. Well, the actual functionality of this is all set up. We just need to stock it and place the signs. I'm not going to demo it for you, but this, this machine is up and running and we have just a few blue axolotls stocked. Plus we restocked the other guys that needed it. It's super cheap, so I set it up so that you have just a little bit less of a chance of getting a blue one than any other color. I love that somebody added a little security camera here. It makes me very happy. This was an incredibly grindy episode, but I did get a lot of good stuff done. I'm just obsessed with this. It's so cool. And like, there's the part of me that's like, I built this and I don't think it's that good because I built it, but I, I, I think it's a good build still. But it took a lot more time than I, I was anticipating, not gonna lie. Anyways, now we have a sustainable source of soul sand, as well as crying obsidian, but soul sand's really the thing that we needed a lot of. And quartz. Quartz is good too. But with those supplies taken care of, we can get back to the true task at hand. But for now, I'm gonna hang out in my newest build and enjoy the satisfaction of having finished something this big. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.